Okay. Now it is required to calculate the potential difference between two points. Assume that we have a simple circuit like this. A real EMF source with an internal resistance R connected to a resistor R. And it is required to find out the potential difference between D and A. To calculate the potential difference between B and A, or to calculate the potential difference between any two points, there is a simple rule that to find the potential between any two points in a circuit, start at one point, regardless which end point. So we can start from A to B, or start from D for A, it doesn't matter. Start from one point and traverse the circuit to the other point. Go with the current to the other point. So, for example, if I'm talking about the potential difference between the point E and A, I can start from A and reverse the circuit to each B. Or, I can start with B and reverse the circuit to reach A. Okay? So, to find the potential between any two points in a circuit, start at one point and traverse the circuit to the other point, following any bus, and add algebra the changes in potential you encounter. So, this is according to the direction of the car and the direction of the electromagnetic force and the voltage drop at point of the resistance and so on. Let us see. Assume that we are talking about the potential difference between the point E and A. So, at the beginning, we need to start from a point. Let us start from A. For example, if I'm going from A in the same direction of the current, so I'll go inside the electromagnetic force. So, I want to be, I want to go from A to B. So, the potential VA plus the potential of the battery inside the electromagnetic force minus the voltage drop across the internal resistance equals the potential at point B. The potential at point A plus B minus the voltage drop IR equals the potential at point B. Now I have one side is A and the other side is B. It is required to find out VB minus VA. So I can take this VA to the other side. So VB minus VA or in other words VBA is the potential difference between B and A equals E minus I R which is actually the potential difference across a real battery. Across a real battery, the potential difference is not E, it's E minus the current through the battery multiplied by its internal resistance. Okay? The question now is, what is R? What is I? Uh, effectively, I doesn't depend only on the small R. It depends on the complete circuit. So, to find out this R, it is required to solve the complete circuit and we have seen that R equals E over R plus small r. So by replacing this I by this value in this equation we can find out VB minus VA equals E the electromagnetic force minus the electromagnetic force over capital R plus small r multiplied by small r. Okay, we can rearrange the denominator to be the same. So in this case, this would be multiplied by capital R plus small r, and this minus r, so minus r plus r will be removed from each other. So the only remaining term is E multiplied by capital R over r plus small r. So 
this is the potential difference in dB minus dB. Another way. We can solve it from B to A. If I'm going from B to A, the potential dB equals the potential difference at the resistance IR plus the potential dA. And this is positive, this is negative, so this is positive IR here, and this VA. So VB equal VA plus IR, or in other words, VB minus VA equals I multiplied by capital R, and I is E over R plus small R. So we can replace this is I. We can reach the same result. V B minus V A would be E over R plus small R multiplied by capital R. So this solution, if I start from point B, and this is a solution if I start from point B, and both solutions are the same. Alright, numerically, if our circuit is as follows, E equals 12 volts and small r is 2 ohms and capital R is 4 ohms, so the potential dBA, dB minus dA, is 12 volts over 4 ohms plus 2 ohms multiplied by 4, so in this case it would be 8 volts. So, even so, our electromagnetic force is originally 12 volts. When it is connected to our circuit, the potential difference between its terminal is less than this value is just only 8 volts in our case. Okay? This is because it is a real EMF force source, not ideal EMF source. If it is an ideal EMF source, small r would be zero, and the potential between B and A would be always 12 volts, which is an electromagnetic force, right? Now we are going to talk about what we are saying, a grounding circuit. And we use this symbol as a ground. Effectively, a grounding circuit is making some point as a reference to be zero volts. We usually talk about the potential difference between a point and another. So, if you are talking about potential difference, uh, it doesn't uh, make sense to make arbitrary value for one point and the other point is larger than this or lower than this. We make it, one of these points is always zero and all the points are with respect to this zero. So, this zero point would be the ground of the circuit. So, grounding the circuit usually means connecting the circuit to a grounding uh, conducting bus like this. Here grounding means only that the potential is defined to be zero as the grounding point in the circuit. For example, if we are talking about the circuit that we have already solved the potential difference between VB and A, where we find that VB minus VA equals 8 volts, we can say that this point A would be grounded. So it means that the point A is zero. So in this case, VB is 8, such that VB minus VA would be 8 volts. It is not a must to ground the point A. We can ground the point B, for example. So in this case, the potential at point B is 0. So 0 minus VA equal 8 volts. So this means that A has minus 8 volts potential okay so this actually the same circuit as this but the only difference is that i have assumed the potential of point a to be zero so here the potential b is a 
Here I have assumed the potential B is zero, so the potential A is minus zero. But in both cases, the potential difference is the same. Okay. Usually, in circuits, we take uh, the negative part of the battery connected to the ground. Usually, but it is not a must. If you are talking about power potential and electromagnetic force, so this is our circuit with the real EMF source with its internal resistance R and connected to the resistor capital R. The total power uh, or the power, sorry, uh, the power it can be calculated as I multiplied by the potential. So the power, the net power of the energy transfer from the EMF device to charge carriers is I multiplied by V. V here is the potential across the terminal of the electromagnetic force device. This V is the potential difference between the terminals of the electromagnetic force device. So in real, Electromagnetic force device, this V is the original electromagnetic force minus the voltage drop across its internal resistance I multiplied by small r. So, in the case of real EMF source, the net energy transfer B would be I multiplied by the original electromagnetic force minus. I R uh, small r internal resistance, which equals I multiplied by E, the original power, minus I squared multiplied by small r minus the dissipated power inside the internal resistance of the electromagnetic force device. So this power is the net power delivered to the load of the resistance is the original power from the electromagnetic force minus the dissipated power, the internal dissipated power inside the electromagnetic force. The power, the rate power BR of the energy transfer to thermal energy with an EMF device is BR or the dissipated power, internal dissipated power, B small r is I squared R, which is the internal dissipation rate inside the EMF or the real EMF source. The EMF at which the EMF device transfer energy for the charge carriers and internal thermal energy is defined as I multiplied by E, which actually the total power from the original or from the center of the EMF device. But this power not all this power reach to the resistance here. This actually the total power inside the EMF device itself. As an example, we have a circuit here composed of two real EMF sources, E1 and E2 and a single resistance R and we assume that this point is A or this equipotential surface is A this equipotential surface or line is C or node is C this equipotential surface or line is B so we have three terminals A, B and C and this battery one and this battery two and we have the electromagnetic force of the battery one E1 equal 4.4 volts 4.4 volts in this direction and the internal electromagnetic force of battery two E2 is 2.1 volts The internal resistance of the first battery is 2.3 ohms 
and the internal resistance for the second battery R2 is 1.8 volts and the load resistance R is 5.5 volts it is required to find out the current I in the circuit the current I in the circuit ok first of all we will make a closed loop and let us assume that this closed loop is moving anti-clockwise like this okay and we will start from point A and go to battery 1 to point B and we go to the resistance to point C and from point C we will go to battery 2 to point A one second ok and we will assume that this point A is grounded so it is a 0 for the voltage equal to ok let us start at the point A the voltage is 0 If I'm going from A inside the battery, I'm going opposite to the battery. If I'm going from A into here, I'm going opposite to the battery. So the potential difference in this case would be negative because I'm moving opposite to the potential difference of the battery. So once I enter the battery, the potential will be dropped to the value of minus E, 1. Once I enter to the battery, the voltage will be dropped to minus E1. E1 equals 4.4 .4 volts. Okay. Then, because the actual current of the assumed current R in this direction and I'm moving in the opposite of the direction of the current, the voltage drop across the resistance would be positive. So I'll move from minus 4.4 .4 to a positive step on R1 across the internal resistance of the first battery R1. Now I have reached the point B. This is a potential at the point B. Once again, I am moving across the resistance in the opposite direction of the current. As long as I am moving in the opposite direction of the current, the voltage drop on the resistor would be positive. So, in this case, the voltage drop would be I multiplied by capital R. Then I have reached to the point C. So, this is the potential C. Then, inside the battery 2, there is a potential difference at the internal resistance R2 would equal I multiplied by R2. Finally, the potential E2 will be in the same direction of my loop. So, E2 would be positive. So, I jump the value. E2, which is 2.1 volts, to reach the potential at point A, and the potential at point A is assumed to be zero from the start. So, actually, this is a potential diagram of the circuit. Numerically, we can say that the potential or the summation of the potential in the closed loop, in this closed loop, would be minus E1 plus. I multiplied by R1 plus I multiplied by R plus I multiplied by R2 plus E2 equals 0. This is a mathematical representation of this graph. Now, by solving for I, we will remove E1 and E2 to the other side. 
and divide by R1 plus capital R plus R2, we can obtain I as E1 minus E2 over R plus R1 plus R2. So E1 is 4.4, E2 2.1, and R is 5.5. R1 is 2.3, R2 1.3. We can find the current here to be 0.2396 and there, or in other words, it can be approximated as 240 milliampers. It should be noted that if the value of the current of the thin current is positive, it means that the assumed direction of the current is correct. If we have found that the value of the current is negative, it means that the assumed direction of the current was wrong and is in the opposite direction. So in our case, the current is positive, so the assumed current direction here is correct. Okay? Alright, so this circuit has this current I. 240 milliampers. For the same circuit, it is required to find out what is the potential difference between the terminals of battery 1. The potential difference between the terminals of battery 1. As we mentioned, we can find out by starting from one point to move to the other point. So, we have two bus. Either to move from B to A or to move from A to C and from C to B. Actually, we don't like to make like Goha, so we are going to from B to A directly. Okay, if you are interested to be in like Goha, you are most welcome. You will find the same result. So, uh, in this case, we can see that. The potential VB minus the potential difference at the resistance R1 plus the potential at the EMF force E1 equal the potential at point A. So VB minus IR1 plus E1 equal VA. Maybe someone will ask why I have assumed that this is minus I R1 and plus E1 and in the previous case we said that minus E1 and plus I R1. In the previous case we assumed that the loop is going from A to B. Now I'm going from B to A. Okay, this take care. So we have VB minus I multiplied by R1 plus E1 equal VA. Or in other words, we can say that VB minus VA equals R small r. Oh no, we will see VA minus VB would equal minus I multiplied by R1 plus E1. And we have already calculated I, it was. 0.2396 ampere and R1 is already 2.3 ohms and E1 is 4.4 volts so the potential difference at the two terminals of the battery one would be 3.84 volts or nearly 3.8 volts which is less than the original potential difference 4.4 as we said that before for real EMF source, the voltage between its terminals in a connected circuit is less than its internal potential difference. Okay.